on 947. This is Eyewitness News. Good evening, I'm Lerato Hufila. Gauteng Premier Banyaza Lusufi says Zahara's remarkable journey, humility and unparalleled talent has made her a true icon for every ordinary South African with a dream. Lusufi joined South Africa's music fraternity, close friends and family of the late musician at a memorial service in Joburg this afternoon. And traffic volumes on major routes are increasing as holiday makers head out of Gauteng. Thousands of people travelling to different destinations are expected to leave the province. A partly cloudy Friday, in store for Gauteng tomorrow with showers and thunder showers. Joburg dropping to an overnight low of 15 degrees, peaking at 26. Pretoria 16 and 29. For Inaching 16 and 26 as well. Lerato Hufala, Eyewitness News. Eyewitness News on 947. For more, click ewm.co.za. Hashtag MSW. You may begin to feel anxious or excited. Honest, deliberate, engaging, uncensored. High dosage administration can cause adverse reactions. And most importantly, independent in mind and execution. This is a normal response. Are you ready? Where are sports worldwide? Uh, sports broadcaster uh, Aisha Kumagisha says on Twitter, looking forward to this, Janine van Veik is a true legend and a trailblazer. I mean, say no more. Well, your response wow. to that? Wow. Thank That's you. That's one of our international I audience feel honored. That's watching. I feel honored. 185 caps. Huge, huge deal. Not many have done that. In fact, you're the first. And I think uh, you wrote a letter saying thank you to the rest of the, the country and perhaps even the continent. And I think this moment right here is just our moment to say thank you to you because what you've done was absolutely amazing. The fact that you were only supposed to be on that pitch for five minutes and ended up playing longer is a testament of just how talented you are. Congratulations, Cindy. Let's see. Congratulations to Janine on being the most kept player. Uh, I mean, LeBron James said it um, uh, past few days that a record can be broken, but nobody can take the fact that you are the first to, to achieve it. The memorial service of the late singer Zahara. So uh, I'm here to celebrate her life. As an industry, as friends, um, we have failed her. And we owe her an apology. We can do better. What are we learning from Zahara's story is to do better. Stop making fun of other people's downfalls. understand Uzahara, ubeti, mtwalo wa moyandi sinda, tia kela ndipati se, ululi sanja sako. Robert Marawa, live on 947, Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Sowetan Live. Hashtag MSW. Yeah, it was beautiful rendition after rendition of the famous musicians, uh, famous songs as well, some of the most popular songs that she sang. Uh, that is Zahara at the memorial service uh, held early on today. And a big thanks to everybody that showed up there uh, to show their love, show their support. Uh, more importantly, somebody like Uzorani Mahula, uh, who everybody knows as a brilliant, brilliant musician, uh, was able to put out a wonderful rendition as well of Luliwa. So thank you so much, South Africa, uh, for showing one of our own, one of our best talents. Uh, so, so much love indeed. And right here on hashtag MSW will continue indeed to highlight the important role that she's played in society, in the community and everywhere else. Welcome to the show. Hey, just one more to go tomorrow before we wrap things up for the end of the year. Now you've got a very strong panel here, man. I think I've never been more nervous than I am today. Uh, I think these guys just walked in here. And encyclopedias of the beautiful game of football. You're going to be talking Africa Cup of Nations. We're going to be talking AFCON 2024. Côte d'Ivoire, South Africa's hopes, other countries' hopes, who you think will make it through. Um, you know, Senegal, they've been looking great. Do they have it in them? 
to defend the title. Uh, so be part of the conversation as well. We do invite you. Uh, yeah, like you said, it's, it's an African showpiece. It is one that we look forward to. 060-708-0484. Do send us your WhatsApp voice notes. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. What's next for Janine van Veek? Did you think it was never going to happen? Did you think that, okay, now the cycle of the new players will begin, whether it's for WAFCON or whether it is for the World Cup again, and Janine will never get there? Of course, there were some doubts. I mean, there's always doubts when things don't go your way. But I have to say, you know, thanks to um, Safa, they obviously grinded it out for, for me to, um, you know, speak and have communications with the coach to say, hey, like, we need to give Janine this, not only for herself, but also for female footballers in the country, on the continent, for the next generation coming up to inspire the next generation as well, which I fully agree with. Let's just kiss and say goodbye. Hashtag MSW. MSW. Yeah, you might be preparing for your festive getaway. Are you preparing for Christmas, New Year? Hey, guys, guess what? It's only 30 days, though, before the 34th edition of the biggest sports event on the African soil that takes place uh, from the 13th of January to the 11th of February 2024 in Abidjan. Uh, that is the Africa Cup of Nations. Man, don't you all love our African football? I think it's going to be a thriller. I, I, I've got that feeling. Something deep down inside tells me that uh, we might see one of the best Africa Cup of Nations in a very long time. I don't know why. Maybe these gentlemen will help shape that thinking. Maybe they'll tell me I am hallucinating. I'm dreaming. I am not well upstairs. Well, the opening game will feature, of course, the host nation, Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, they're going to be up against uh, Guinea-Bissau on Saturday, the 13th of January, 2024, at the Alassane. Watara Olympic Stadium in Abimbe, in Abidjan. And we can't wait, man. We can't wait for that. Uh, so much so that we've brought an expert panelist. You've brought in a panel that is going to panel beat us into shape. Oh, looking forward to this, man. No one does in-depth analysis like these gentlemen do. I don't know who their favorites are. I don't know who they're going to be putting their money on. Who still needs to work on their teams? What can we expect? Yeah, man, the Rolls Royce of them all in studio. Let me start off with a very imposing looking gentleman with a very nice cap, uh, Edible Dinia. Uh, you remember him, eh? A legend. He doubts that, but I told him that he is. Head coach of Shumba Football Development, as well as African Football Analyst. Mr. Dinia, good to see you, sir. Welcome. My good sir, Mr. Marao. How are you? I'm very strong. You're looking strong. Thank you very much. You're training not only the team, but you're training yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey? No time to rest. 30 days to go. Are you excited? Very excited. Why? Um, you look at um, my favorite team. Yeah. And I'm going to say it before if the, the tournament even thing started. Senegal. The reason why, Mr. Marao, is that for a coach of CSS caliber yes. to play a 15-year-old into the national team, that says a lot. What message is he sending out? That whenever there is a young boy that mm -hmm. is good at a national level, play him. Regardless. Regardless. But he is a talent, though. Very talented. So if I had to, from the onset, ask you for three favorites for this tournament, you would say the defending champions, definitely. Definitely. They would be at number one. They would be at number one. Number two and three? Morocco, number two. And I'll give it to Algeria. Algeria. Yeah. So North African dominance is what you're focusing on. That's where it's going. Which poses a problem because I, I'll come back and I'll ask the question about what's happening within West Africa, what's happening within the Southern African region, but former Swallows, hmm. maybe let me say he's a Swallows GM. <laughs> <laughs> hey, these big titles. <coughs> hey, Swallows GM and African football analyst, Elasto Kapoenza, good to see you, sir. Welcome to the show. Akwaba to all the listeners. It means welcome. Yes. That is in the local language of Ivory Coast. It is the official name of the mascot of the tournament. 
Rob, good to be here. Uh, greetings to everyone that is joining us. Yeah. Always a pleasure to discuss African football. Uh, this is the greatest sporting event that is going to take place on the 13th of January to the 11th of February. Who is going to lift that trophy? Yeah. My good friend there mentioned the likes of um, Morocco, Senegal. Mm. Look, if you go back and say who has actually defended this tournament, you have to go a long way mm. to find that country. It's always difficult. You look at Algeria, 2019, they win it. After that, they go through a slump, mm. fails to qualify for the World Cup, and vacates at the group stages in 2021. The host nation, I might be tempted to say that, yes, it's an ivory coast that has done so well. If I look at their form in the World Cup qualifiers, winning two games or six points, yeah. uh, hosting, is that still an advantage to be a host nation? Again, if I look back, I might say, when was the last time a host nation lifted the trophy? Egypt failed, mm -hmm. Cameroon failed. Is Ivory Coast going to be also the casualty of this host nation uh, disaster of not actually lifting up the trophy? So it's an exciting yeah. Nations Cup on our cards. Looking at the 24 teams, of course, and again, for the first time since 2015, we don't have a debutant. All these countries that are there in Ivory Coast have had experience at this level. And when you talk about hosts, though, and, and, and beautifully laid out, um, I've, I've got to say, because when you tell that story and you try and tell that story of host nation, if I'm not mistaken, you have to go back to something like 1984, uh, when last they hosted an AFCON um, of this magnitude. So you have to go back a long, long way to look at it. But they've also underachieved. We have got to be as honest as we can here, Elasta, to say, Côte d'Ivoire, with all of these superstars that they've paraded before, yes, they parade them in front of us. We see them play in different uh, top European leagues. But then they just flatter to deceive. They come onto the African platform and, and AFCON tournament, and they don't do well. Is there a science to this? Is there a reason that we can attach to this? Because they're going to need it now more than they've ever needed it before. Because like you rightfully say, they are hosting. And a lot is expected of them. It's a, I couldn't agree with you more, Rob. If I look at Ivory Coast and what it has been. Yeah. At times you tend to look at World Cup qualifiers. You look at the success that they've had. The golden generation between 2005 2015, where consecutively qualifying for the World Cups. But to look at the record on the African continent, again, it left a lot to be desired, especially with that team. They've won it twice, uh, 1992, uh, and of course, 2015, uh, beating the same opponent, that is yeah. Ghana, uh, in penalty yeah. shootouts. But, but you'd have expected more, the Ayatollahs of this world, mm -hmm. uh, the Didier Drogba of this world. They've really had uh, an excellent, you know, really exceptional lineup of teams but if you look at the achievement it does not match and also i mean i go back to group h uh, where Côte d'Ivoire were playing in a group with zambia so zambia topping that group they came in second place and uh, maybe they'll give us something to chew on uh, in just a second uh, let me throw it across here because hey there's a trio of gentlemen here hey scholars of the game TV Consult's Chairman, African Football Analyst, Timothy Batabaire. Good to see you, sir. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Whew, you're looking forward to this. I mean, the countdown, like I said, 30 days to go. Forget about Christmas and all these wonderful things. He has a big <laughs> tournament that we all <laughs> having to look forward to. What are you looking forward to the most? Uh, this is the third, fourth edition of the AFCON yeah. and uh, the only tournament that uh, sends shockwaves to the rest of the football uh, fraternity uh, talk about the European coaches at this moment in time. They are yeah. not in position to to welcome the tournament or be excited as we are, uh, but we have no choice. And uh, the AFCON is going to be the third time um, we are hosting it uh, at this moment in time. Uh, remember, it was it has been moved to to January simply because of uh, the weather conditions. Sure. Uh, CAF, as the leadership of football in the African continent, had made a decision to. Uh, to try and move the tournament into June, July, yeah. so that they can accommodate, you know, the European, you know, concerns of trying to to play the tournament okay. when it does not affect their leagues. Uh, but we are finding out that uh, 
our weather partners don't, are not permitting that, and uh, rightly so, we are going back to January and February. So this is a wonderful tournament at this moment in time. Um, it's the third time we are having uh, a 24, uh, uh, you know, tournament, team tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are having an, exp uh, an expanse of football. Uh, and at this moment in time, I'm looking and listening to Elasto and uh, Dina saying, you know, maybe Senegal, I've got a soft spot for Senegal. My debut was against uh, yeah. uh, the likes of Alhaj Diof, uh, Fadiga in, uh, in Kampala. That you were. So you always have a feeling that, uh, yes, they will be able to defend mm. uh, their trophy. But Algeria proved that, no, it's not easy to defend a trophy. They even left the, uh, the championship without going out of the group stages. So is Ghana the Black Stars. But always, we are always having, you know, a special mention of the Super Eagles. Yeah. Will they be able to fly? I'm yet to tell. Sure. <laughs> Leaving the intrigue there, Timothy. Hey, leaving the intrigue. You mentioned something about when the tournament is being played and how much of a nightmare it's been for, especially in the English Premiership, where the, the coaches have always said it's a nightmare. Some coaches even go as far as saying that they don't want to buy African players because they're going to be gone for almost a month at a critical stage of a season in the EPL. And I was just looking at the numbers uh, just, you know, the other day. I was <laughs> looking at more than 40 Premier League players who are going to be missing, uh, you know, the, the, the championship of the league. Nottingham Forest being the most affected, uh, where they could lose seven players. Uh, as far as the calculation goes, Man United going to be losing three players, including first choice goalkeeper. Maybe he might need that breather. Uh, or none. <laughs> I mean, listen, he's, he's been blamed for everything. He's literally been blamed for everything. Um, but that's that's the nature of football. So how, how impactful, seeing that you raised that topic first, uh, Timothy, run with it uh, as we head into the news. Just how impactful that is. Do the players bring their hearts into it or do they come through to the AFCON hoping not to get a major injury so that they don't lose out on their places in their first clubs, uh, choice clubs there back home? I think over time it has changed. Players have embraced the African Cup of Nations. They are looking forward to coming home to try and, and show their talent in the African continent. And congrats to CAF yeah. that has also tried to put mechanism to welcome, you know, the international African players to feel welcome to, to come home. But again, uh, whenever you travel away from your club, there is always a void that is being created. Mm -hmm. uh, you you perform. That's the, those are moments when you are more appreciated. They feel the void. They feel your importance. Mm -hmm. And then you have um, a place in that team to be recognized that without being there, there is a void. So I think uh, it goes both ways for uh, club and the player. It's, it's a platform that we have to explore. We need to be proud of, uh, of the African Cup of Nations. But it's very important going forward. Um, I remember during the campaign of Dr. Patrice Musepe, the CAF president, mm. he put special emphasis on the infrastructure of, uh, of, of stadiums on the African continent. And we've got examples of clubs and countries that are not being able to play in their own countries because of their poor infrastructure. For me, mm. if we continue moving that way, then we shall be able to grow the African football brand so that we no longer need to go to Europe, mm. bring the money on the African continent and grow this brand and we can have and enjoy our local talent on the African well, continent. Well, I think uh, you're almost uh, chatting about the AFL. We saw the AFL and what it's done, very short, very, you know, within a month it was done and big monies were being won. So can we grow that uh, is what Timothy is asking. So be part of the conversation. When we come back from the break, we continue uh, with this very fine panel of uh, gentlemen. We were talking about Senegal. Uh, is that your favorite as well? If you're listening to the show, send us your WhatsApp voice note or maybe you think otherwise because they did top their group. Um, it was pretty much... Um, yeah, a group where they sailed, man. They didn't even lose a single game, uh, did Senegal in that group. Second was Mozambique. Hashtag MSW live now. on 947 Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live at the same time. Hashtag MSW. You can't afford insurance. So many things can go wrong. What if something happens? Do what others say you can't with our flexible business insurance. Because with personalized and competitive quotes, flexible premiums, and a dedicated claims team, you can rest assured that the business you've worked so hard for is well protected. Start, manage, and grow your business at standardbank.co.za forward slash rise above the noise. Standard Bank. Standard Bank is an authorized financial services and registered credit provider. T's and C's apply. 
Join the flip side with the new Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5. Take your best selfies hands down and hands free. Get it for 1,079 Rand per month for 36 months on an MTN Megatalk or Gigs S plan or trade in your device and pay 679 Rand per month. Plus, get a free 2,000 Rand virtual MasterCard voucher. T's and C's apply. Skip to the good stuff at an MTN store or mtn.co.za now. MTN. Just and an exit. <coughs> Ah, when I need on-the-go relief from a painful sore throat, I use Andalex C lozenges. It kills viruses and bacteria, reduces inflammation, and gives my mouth a burst of fresh flavor. Andalex, SA's number one choice for a sore mouth and throat. Andalex C lozenges are available at all leading pharmacies and supermarkets. Just Andalex it. Sandton City is pulling out all the stops to make this festive season the most magical one yet with Momo's Magical Adventure. A show set to delight the whole family through song and dance, experience a proudly South African story of joy, friendship and generosity. Join us for this delightful production from 8 December to 7 January. Bookings now open at sandtoncity.com. See you in the city this festive season for Momo's Magical Adventure. Hey, you know the hassle we put in this year comes down to this very moment. Going back to work, ah, see jokes, prize, and scheme, family time, no more crazy. No problem, it's Suzuki is pulling up with fire deals on various models to make this the best summer yet. So don't miss out. Get with the vibe. Visit suzukiauto.co.za. Pick your summer wheels and book a test drive today. on Marawa Sports Worldwide. What's next for Janine van Veek? Plenty, I would imagine. She's here, though, to let us in. Are you retiring? Have you retired? <laughs> when do you think you're going to retire? And then you finally call time. I mean, how difficult was it? Yeah, I wanted to retire in my, my time, no one else's time. And I felt it was the right moment for me to do that, especially on such a high note of becoming the Africa's most highest cap player. Um, and I didn't know about this record that could possibly be broken until you know last year yeah. that has just been a cherry on top of the cake for my career it's been such a fulfillment of a yeah. career i think after lifting the afcon trophy i thought that was it until i thought there's one more one more to go and that was the record Let's just kiss and say goodbye hashtag msw Hashtag MSW. Yeah, it's a strong panel of uh, African football analysts in studio with me. Edible Dinia, Timothy Batabaire, as well as Elasto Capoenza. Looking forward to your contributions as well. We were just saying off air that, hey, hey, yeah, Hugo Bruce, I mean, he's released his uh, list, his squad, prelim squad today. A lot of people saying, hmm, which football is he watching? Let's find out what you're saying. And Rob, it's the boy here, Rob. I've made peace that coach Hugo Bruce has got his own way of selecting players, and it seems like the coach is more receptive to players who are least favorable to many of us. Uh, but any sport other than a semi-final sport would have been a total failure for Bafana and the coach. Uh, but I would have liked to see the following players being considered. Uh, Elias Mokwana from uh, uh, Sikukuni, uh, Rile Mufugeng, uh, Umkulisi, uh, uh, Gift Links, uh, uh, Tabang Muremi from Amazulu, and uh, uh, Tabang Matududi from uh, uh, Bulukwani City. Uh, because for me, these players have been exceptional throughout the season, and they are very young. It's players that we can even consider beyond uh, Afcon, but it seems like uh, the coach doesn't uh, see them in his plans. Uh, but uh, Rob, uh, lastly, just want to find out from you uh, the issue around bonuses. Do you know if that has been uh, cleared out? Because we don't want issues going into the Afcon that players are not uh, performing on due to matters beyond uh, football reasons. Deboko, yeah? Thank you so much. Deboko, thank you very, very much indeed. Uh, the issue around bonuses, and we did put out an invitation, by the way. Let me put that on record. Thank you for reminding me, Deboko. We put out an invitation to the South African Football Association, uh, the president, uh, to be here, uh, but he was traveling. He went to Morocco. Then I think he said he's going to Saudi Arabia after that. So physically, he can't be here. Uh, we also put out an invitation for Coach Hugo Bruce to also be here. I was told that he's back home. 
the last time I had a conversation with him, he says, no, nah, he doesn't do radio interviews because if he does a radio interview with me, he'll have to do radio interviews with everybody. So, okay, we allow that to happen. Not sure what that means, but it's also important. Guys, I mean, it's important that we have a national team coach accessible, engaging, not just at press conferences uh, where, you know, situations are about the team that you've selected most of the time. You want to find out, you want to take him back to certain games that he has played where you, we were not happy with certain approaches, but no, he says he's unavailable. Deboho noted, oh yeah, we also sent out an invitation to Helman Mkelele, the assistant uh, coach who is in the country, but yeah, that also uh, didn't land positively. Uh, so we will have our own discussion, which really, it doesn't matter who is uh, not coming through from the association. We've got our own association here uh, in studio that we've formed now. Uh, so the conversation will continue nonetheless. Uh, saying that the likes of um, Abo Elias and Abo Gift, um, you know, Gift Links is one player that not too many people have been talking about uh, in recent time. Gentlemen, I'm sure you've seen. Hey, Dina, Elasto, Tim, this uh, prelim squad uh, that has been sent out, Bafana Bafana, anybody, take the bite. What do you make of it? I think, I think for me, Rob, uh, if you listen to our, our listeners' comments and the national team, yeah, these are good discussions, always subject to mm. debate. Um, you look at Bafana Bafana, one might say predomin predominantly of local players look at what Sundowns have done. You would expect more players coming from Sundowns. Uh, you look at players that are, you know, based overseas. Again, there are a few of them that might not have made the list. Mm. You look at the coach, the caliber of Hugo Bruce, 2017, winning it with Cameroon. Uh, Bafana has improved really a lot uh, since he took over, uh, qualified them, although you might say, uh, if you look at how the qualification process went about, only three teams that were in that group, of course, Zimbabwe, being disqualified or suspended. Mm. Looking at all that, Rob, you might say, yes, I feel that Bafana is on the right track. What is it that Bafana want to achieve when they go to the Nations Cup? Is it them looking at the previous appearance, 2019, missed out 2021? Uh, where do we start as Bafana? Do we mm. start by just trying to get out of the group stages? Are we trying to maybe get to uh, the latter stages of the tournament? 2019 in Egypt, quarterfinal, you know, that is where they departed. Did so well. Last 16, they were there, uh, beating the likes, likes of Egypt, the host. Uh, again, that is something that they can build on. Mm. But I think reality also needs to be looked at as to where is Bafana coming from? They did not qualify for the World Cup. Uh, they did not qualify for 2021. I think they were a team capable of, at the very least, coming out of the group stages. Last 16, last, last 16 or the quarterfinals, I think it's a realistic uh, objective that Bafana could look at. The team that, the preliminary team that has been announced by Hugo Bruce, gentlemen, I feel that this team is more than capable to at least get to the quarterfinals. Have they been tested enough? I, I look at your expression, Dean. You're not, you're not convinced. Yeah, uh, true, uh, true, Mr. Arao. I mean, <clears throat> you know, we always have our own team, supporters, even us, that, uh, that will select. Yes. And that would be a very good team that will never be beaten, but it will never play. So we leave it to the coach, whatever the coach decided that he wants to do. I mean, we were talking uh, uh, earlier on with a team that uh, we are giving an example about Spain national team, yes. you know, compared to Sundowns and, and Barcelona. There was a time Barcelona was everywhere. Yeah. Yes. So same applies with Sundowns. Playing beautiful football, dominating. So why not pick players that are outside Sundowns that you can then combine with Sundowns because Sundowns have been doing very well. Yes. Africa, local, they, they are there. So we were talking about the foreigners that we, we looked at uh, from Sundowns that four players that if we take that out, we put in Pesitao, we put in one, two, three, four players, yeah. and then they can gel. Mm. Probably that will be Bafana Bafan. As, but, as a Sundowns offset. As a Sundowns offset. But you, if, you if, have already about 11 <laughs> players that are in that prelim squad. But are they going to play? Yeah. Well, see, others that have been left out. I mean, and, and Naomi Miami people say, well, you, what more does he exactly. have to do? You see, club and... Club and national team football, they are different. Yeah. Uh, you, you can get a player that is so good uh, at, the, at the club level 
Uh, and I remember when I came into this country, we had the Tabo Moki, we had uh, mm. uh, the likes of uh, um, Arthur Zwani. Yeah. Uh, and when called to the national team, you know, it was always uh, a challenge to replicate the same, uh, you know, performance into into the national team. So the chemistry uh, of getting, you know, the national team players to gale from different clubs is very key. Mm. Yes, we know that uh, if you look at um, over time, you, you have got the leading clubs in the country. You're looking at the likes of uh, Sundowns, Chiefs, Pirates, always dominating because uh, they have got the capacity to get all the cream of mm. the country to be within their ranks. So it's easier to select the national team. So always the national team coaches go for that. But now with South Africa, you have got a pool of players, you know, where the league is so beautiful that uh, any team can can beat any, any team on, on their given day. So now it's very important to understand yeah. how different players can cope when brought together in the national team. But tell me, though, tell me, gentlemen, tell me, you you know what, I'm disagreeing with here, and I hear your point about the big clubs, and maybe that's a mistake that a lot of the coaches were making. But in my heart, I'm seeing a Cape Town City Mm -hmm. that is doing well. I'm seeing a Stellenbosch, the Uh coaching Uh of Coach Stevie B, Barker, Mm -hmm. has been outstanding. I mean, I I, I watched that Cape Derby that they had, the quality Uh of the goals that were scored... And I'm saying th- th- there's something fundamentally wrong that we are doing where we are not identifying those players that are playing at club level for a Stellenbosch. Yes, they might not be the most watched team, mm. but they're also into a cup final. Yeah, but look, I mean, if, if you look at, okay, if we're talking about Sundowns, yeah. they're playing in the Champions League. So they know these African leagues, how they are. Yes. And now the experience that they get from there to bring them to the national team, it's almost one of the same thing. Right. So hence I'm saying that you're saying that, okay, maybe club level and national team is not the same. But if you're playing for Champions League, are you saying that it's not the same as playing uh, Africa Cup of Nations? Yeah, but, uh, but Rob, if you look at the issue of um, maybe extending your pool yeah. as wide as you can, and you, you are looking at all the 16 clubs of the PSL, yes, the, the likes of... Um, also in Apolis, who's playing for Polokwane City. Yeah. Uh, that has been called up. But but Rob, we this is a team that is going to the Nations Cup tournament. Yeah. It's not like they are playing qualifiers. So I think at the moment, yes, the coach has to try to come up with the best that he can. But right through the qualification process, other tournaments that are available as well, I think the coach can be given that opportunity to really look at all these other players that are doing well at club level. Mm. But we can't be expecting the coach that look at every good player that is playing in the PSO. I think it counts what uh, Ed is saying about, you know, these players, their pedigree, their experience, the you know, Champions League, yes. they are playing the AFL. That is where the coach can have the confidence that these players already are exposed to high-level football. So I just feel that the coach has tried and I think he's had opportunities. A Kosafa tournament, a qualification games that the coach can be able to try, mm. you know, some combinations. But at the moment, Rob, he has to try to go for the tried and tested people, players that can be able to make sure that they deliver. Uh, when it comes to the actual tournament. All right, I might just put you on the spot, uh, gentlemen, and ask for your starting eleven as far as that is concerned. But you were talking, when you talk about Sundowns, I mean, their, their latest game when they played against the uh, Pyramids, you would almost look at that starting lineup and you would have to eliminate a few players because they'll be disqualified for playing, uh, you know, because they're not South African. Uh, you know, Butul is, is Moroccan, so he'd have to sit that one out. Uh, Shalulile would have to sit that one out. You know, Alende Bravo would have to sit that one out. Uh, Costa would have to sit that one out. So you really punch holes into into that team because like you say they they're not south africans they can't play but he says south africa have got everything that it takes to get into a quarterfinal stage realistic not realistic tim very realistic uh southern region especially south africa there's a way you you play football yeah uh, that is quite unique and if you concentrate using those abilities uh, put the structure and the discipline on the field of play, you can beat any given uh, team on the day. So I'm not surprised that uh, uh, Elasto is spot on. If you're going to face the likes of Tunisia, Mali, yeah. uh, with the likes of the nipness of the South African players, you can go far. Okay. Dina? <sighs> Quarterfinals. You think Shalouli is going to be... Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, uh, listen. He, he the team. Who will supply? Every, Who will supply every, him? Every, Who no, will give him the it service? Doesn't matter. It, I mean, look at it. Most, if you look at, okay, let's talk about South Africa, Zimbabwe, and, and what? The minute you're given to play against those high teams, yeah. that's where you perform. 
But now but, we're but talking about if if yeah, we talk about Namibia, yeah, yeah. Ooh, mm. they, it's gonna be it's gonna be a very very a challenging game. You want very to, challenging. You game. want to call it a derby? But, but no. Ebafana, Ebafana, <laughs> more, <laughs> Ebafana, more like Ebafana at any given stage, Ebafana should be able to beat Namibia on paper. Why? Oh, yeah, on, they are facing on paper, them on yes. the third. It's the third time that they'll face Namibia mm. at this competition, but. You would think you would fancy Bafana at any given time. If you look at Namibia makeup, comprising of mostly players best in the country, South Africa. Yes, about yeah. Bafana. Even so, back in those yes. days when yes. the, the old Serbs like, and yes. no Serbs yeah. were still yeah. playing, exactly. yeah, it was a, always it was the case. No, because then I, I wanted to ask him a question yeah. that when you were playing for Zimbabwe national team, when you played South Africa, how how were you feeling? Yeah, no, South Africa is the team to beat in the southern region. And you've beaten yeah. South Africa by four goals in the past. There's a difference to be motivated to beat Bafana Bafana yeah. as opposed to beating them. So before the game, you are very motivated to beat Bafana Bafana because you believe the step ahead of you, you have something to prove. To prove yeah. But when in reality, on paper, practically, you're going to lose. Yes, Shaluli is a very good, wonderful finisher. Not who only Shaluli. Who is going to supply him the ball? Not only Shaluli. How many, how many players are from Namibia that are playing in South Africa? Yeah, but, I, but also, Tim, if you look at Namibia, I think rule them out at your own peril. I can tell you that. Because if you look at Namibia, the mm -hmm. qualifiers, Namibia beat Cameroon, Cameroon. here yeah. in mm -hmm. Johannesburg. And they went there to Cameroon. Fresh Cameroon from the World Cup where they were the first African country to beat Brazil at the World Cup. Namibia had to get a point of that Cameroon team. So it's not a team, again, that you might say, okay, uh, you can just you know, roll over them. But again, it's, it's a Bafana for me, in my opinion, that should be able in this group to easily beat the likes of Mali and also Namibia. Tunisia, Tunisia if you look at Tunisia, Rob, it's always a country where it's neither blowing hot or cold. They are somewhere in the middle. Yes, you look at uh, the 1996, the Tunisia that yeah. lost to Bafana. But again, Tunisia, you won't find them at the extremes. It, it's just a country that organized, no superstars. Mm. You can't really tell who is who. Or which which Tunisia. Tunisia will show yes. up. I mean, they, yeah. they, so, they did well to top their group. They only lost one game. Equatorial Guinea were part of that mm -hmm. uh, particular group. Yeah. So you can't discount them because like you say, Last to that, they are that surprise element. Yes. Uh, you know, but they've been very far in tournaments yep. before. That experience, how good are they this time around? That's what we're going to be unpacking here with the panel uh, as they join us after the break. So we'll take your comments, we'll take your calls, we'll take your WhatsApp voice notes. Hey, we're building up, man. It's the Africa Cup of Nations. Africa, are you ready? Are you excited? What are you looking forward to? Morales Sports Worldwide on 947, Monday to Friday from 6 to 7 p.m. Hashtag MSW. Epic winnings await you this festive season with Hollywood Pets. Treat yourself to the widest range of games in Mzansi with Spinner Zonke, Lucky Numbers, Aviator, Live Games, Sports and more. Feel the winning festive spirit and bet now. T's and C's apply. Hollywood Sportsbook is a licensed betting operator. Hollywood Pets supports responsible gambling. No persons under the age of 18 years are permitted to gamble. Winners know when to stop. South African Responsible Gambling Foundation toll-free counseling line 0800 006 008 or WhatsApp help to 076 675 07 Dumelang, South Africa. I am Dr. Doctor, and I have a pressing message for you. If you are a forex trader, but all you are invested in is hot wings, and if they tell you to count your blessings, and you start counting the hot wings in the box, if they tell you to go big or go home, and you go home to eat your hot wings, and if the only thing you bring to the table is a box of hot wings, then avoid TikTok doctors. Rather come to me, Doctor Doctor. Call me on 087-537-6040. Anytime, anywhere, even now, to help you cure the craving. Let us make South Africa a craving-free nation. Chicken licking, soul food. Terms and conditions apply. Dr. Doctor is not a registered member of the health board and is not an alumni of any prestigious institution. Results are not guaranteed. <sighs> work, work, work. Just a little bit longer. In a few months, we'll be sipping something sweet. Shit chattering by the beachfront. Until then, there's plenty of midnight oil to burn and no time to miss the mark. We can't afford to cut corners. We're doing this rat race by the book because nothing's on the back burner when mountains need moving or gas. No. <sighs> 
Breaks are important. Take the Renault Summer Break and get a payment holiday of up to six months. Drive now and pay later when you purchase a new Renault Clio or Renault Kyger Turbo. Book a test drive today at Renault.co.za. Offer valid for this month only. T's and C's apply. You've been waiting and waiting, holding on to your old device, holding out for a smartphone that can do a whole lot more. Finally, here's a powerful phone that also packs an epic camera, slick design, and a seamless ecosystem. The new Galaxy S23 FE lets you join the Galaxy S family and enjoy the amazing benefits. So one final question, are you ready? The new Galaxy S23 FE, epic starts here. Buy yours now. Is this the soundtrack to your cat's health? Put the bounce back into their lives with the new Feline Cuisine Specialized Diet Range. It's boosted with ingredients to help them with joint health, weight management, or hairball control. With this range, you can ensure your cat is perfectly healthy and happy. Put your cat on a Feline Cuisine Specialized Diet today because smart pets deserve smart food. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. Jenny and Fanbank, my guest, uh, retirement from football international and otherwise. Good evening, uh, boy, Rob and uh, Jenny. Uh, all what I can say is, well done, sister. You've done a great job. And you can still be an asset to the young ones to give those uh, perfect advice. All the best on your new venture. You go back a couple of years, Jenny. None of this was, was here. Did you ever dream that we would be in a position where they just options in terms of the women's game. Yeah, there's today there's so much more opportunity and recognition given to women's football and it's growing every single day. It's just growing to become bigger and bigger and bigger. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Good evening, uh, Mr. Marewa Okulo. I'm going to talk to you about my friend. Mr. Marewa, who uh, can Bruce has named his uh, Bafana Bafana squad. But I think, uh, Mr. Marewa, there is one player, and uh, since the coach uh, took over, he has been overlooked quite uh, several times, you know. I don't know if he's not uh, the type of player that he's looking for in his team, as it happened to UAJ while he was still at Mamelo de Sundowns. I'm talking about uh, U Rivaldo Kutsie, Mr. Marawa, who I think is very, very unlucky according to myself, when it comes to a national team collapse. But let's hope the boy uh, won't put his, his head down. He will work hard in future so that maybe the coach will change his mind as he did uh, to Utemba Zwane. But overall, I think he called uh, a very, very good squad. But he's still going to trim it. Maybe some players that we see as uh, supporters deserve to be in the team will be cut off. But I'm very confident that uh, the team will do well in the AFCON, Mr. Marawa. I have no doubt about that. Thank you. Well, Lenny, thank you so much indeed. Uh, unlucky players not to be selected by coach Hugo Bruce. Will they make it? Will they not? Conversation continues right here. Hashtag MSW Mara Sports Worldwide. Live at 947 of Wuma FM, Rise FM. So it's in live wherever you're listening to the show around the country, the continent or the world to be part of the chat right now. Exciting times. 30-day countdown to the Africa Cup of Nations. AFCON 2024 happening in Côte d'Ivoire. you got to be a part of it. Questions that are being asked and a very strong panel here of highly, highly opinionated. I wish I could keep these microphones on during the break because, yo, the things that are said here during the break, yes. Evening, Barov, and evening to the gentlemen in the studio. Um, the gentlemen have spoken of their favorite teams in the tournament and who they think might uh, take um, the championship. A lot of them saying that Senegal might retain the championship. But for me, brother, the question that I want to pose to them is that which team do they see as a dark horse in this tournament? Because we know that uh, the Africa Cup of Nations is a tournament of surprises. And we've seen in the past years a lot of small, so-called small countries come up and showing the big guns of um, Africa that we want to compete and we want to be at the top. So which team do they see as a dark horse in, this, in next year's Africa Cup of Nations? All right, let's uh, go through this very, very quickly, guys, because you can see time's not going to be uh, our friend, uh, Eddie. Who, who's a dark horse in this tournament? 
I think um, I'm going to go with Gambia because the last hmm. uh, Africa Cup of Nations that they played, they lost in the quarterfinals. So you reckon Gambia could go all the way and win the tournament? Um, they'll get into the finals. Yeah, that's a dark horse. If they get into the finals, it means that they will go and surprise everybody, including Senegal. They might. They might. They might surprise Senegal. All right. They finished second in their group with Mali topping that group in the qualifiers. So, uh, Tim, do you agree with that? I mean, the Gambia in the final? They've got the potential to be there, but there's one team that has always, uh, you know, uh, flattered to deceive, and, yeah. and that's Mali. Uh, and I'm, I'm well convinced that uh, this time around, they uh, They'll give it a go. What the is finals. different, Tim? What's different about yeah. Mali this time? Um, I you think, know, I think they're their chance team. Nah, no Mali. They have the players. They have the players now. They have the players. No, they've got they, 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 different players. time <laughs> where Mali could have been what you're saying, but I, I don't think any time soon we would see a Malian team reproduce that golden generation that, yes, you're right, that never achieved much but promised a lot. But don't you look at their qualifiers as a trigger? I mean, here's a, a nation that scored 15 goals yeah. in the qualifiers, only conceding two, um, two goals in the qualifiers. A very healthy goal difference. Does that not swing it in Tim's favor? Yeah, because of this history, Rob, of Mali, I thought of it, I've been disappointed with Mali over yeah. the years and looking at them and really at one stage, even failing to qualify for the World Cup, is one country, them in Burkina Faso, that I feel that they should have at least had a go at the World Cup. But let me get to my team. Give, give, give us your dark horse. <laughs> that I think uh, might go all the way. It's former yeah. champions, uh, 2012 champions, uh, Zambia mm. makes mm. a return and I look at that strike force um, I, I've watched these two strikers uh, Fashion Sakala you've seen them grow Patrick, Patrick you Daka. know what I'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've witnessed these when they played here in South Africa I think it was 2017 yes. uh, when they played in the under 20, under 20 tournament, tournament. Mm. and I've, I've watched them you know and also the, the other player who now had had problem helped me out team yeah, who was playing for... for, yes. for Aki, yeah. Uh, so so I'm, I'm looking at them. They come back, they make a return uh, after being, you know, absent. 2017, they were not there. 2019, 2021. But here they are. It's the Chipolo Polo. The Copper Bullets of Zambia. <laughs> I feel... I feel... <laughs> I feel, Rob, that yes, this, this is a country that really you have, again... You know, found themselves. So watch out uh, for what Chipolo Polo can do. I dark horse is oh, this is this is your team yeah. that is going to. No, no, as a dark horse. Oh, okay. Yes, oh, as a dark okay. horse. Uh, right. My, man, my man is on Zambia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Don't worry. It's, 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 it's the dark horse. And, and 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 the way you're saying it about you know Zambia, you know Chipolo Polo is coming back. <laughs> you know, I can feel it in your heart. And 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 I don't blame you because they they went above the Ivory Coast, the host nation in the in the qualifiers as well to top. At their group, so may, maybe something somewhere is is coming back. You're not agreeing with that. Look, uh, Zambia has always produced the players. Yeah. Uh, for me, talent is not lacking. Uh, it's only the desire, the compassion. If you look at the team that Hanad uh, Havir Hanad assembled, mm -hmm. it was more not about the talent; it was about the desire. Got them to believe that they can win it. If they can do the same, then that's fine. But I still believe that my Mali. The likes of Ismail Koulibaly, 22 years. Yes. With Sheffield United. Sheik Bisuma, we have got Bilo. This team. It's a if, different if, team. If they can shake off that unlucky tag of theirs, Mali as a football nation will swing a surprise in this At least we've got this on record. Anyone that's watching even on YouTube right now will tell you Gambia, Mali, Chipolopol. Yes. Those are the dark horses that have been shaped here in studio. Uh, when we listen to this uh, voice note, I'll come back and chat about uh, Group B because, you know, hey, I mean, they're record time winners of this uh, tournament, the Egyptians, one and seven times. They're going to be in the same group as, as Ghana. <laughs> My goodness me. Um, what can we expect from that? But firstly, though, let's listen out. Hi, Marawa, um, and hi to your panelists there. Um, yes, um, African Nations Cup is upon us. Again, it just calls for readiness. Um, you know, I look forward to a day where African coaches um, will then step up to the podium and coach these teams because 
on each and every African Nations Cup, um, one positive thing that we see is that a star is born, um, and um, that star will go on and represent the continent in Europe, wherever they go. Uh, I'm looking forward to that again. One or two players that would not have known, or the players um, that would then take an opportunity uh, to represent his country and and get scouts, uh, obvious, um, just you know, hovering over him. The other phenomenon that uh, Marawa that I, that worries me all the time is that we then see these old European coaches that will come to this African continent um, that will fail again um, during Nations Cup and then they will then be recycled around in this country starting from the north right down to the south and I don't want to mention names but that is one thing again that you will see coaches that will never coach in Europe but they will just come here and um, and take those big big checks and then disappear through uh, thin air. I don't know. Maybe from Elast, what is what is your comment uh, about these coaches that come to this continent, um, and what happens that they don't leave? Um, they stick around here. Um, so they will start with the, the the national teams. They will coach big teams. They will coach NFD, and then they will just disappear. Thank you. Great show. Thank you so much indeed. A very, very important question. I uh, saw the reaction here in studio when that uh, was <laughs> thrown around. Uh, but it was directed at you, though. Uh, Elasto, how, how do you respond to that, saying that all of these coaches who then come into the continent... Let me drag what, what Tim was saying and maybe match it in whatever answer you're going to give here, yeah, Elasto, is I was going to talk about Ghana and Egypt. Yes. So in Ghana... Tim said, if you play well at club level, it does not necessarily mean you'll be playing well at international level, right? That being said. So Ghana, the way I'm trying to marry this is that you go to Chris Hutton, former Brighton, former Newcastle manager. Those are clubs now coaching a national team. Is that going to do what? So maybe in infusing the question that was directed to you, maybe let's also address that one. Yeah, coaches, another very sensitive area um, on the African continent. I think my view has always been, Rob, um, in general, uh, that as Africa, I feel that we need to trust more for our own. Mm -hmm. There are times where you see a country, a nation is qualified for the World Cup more than five times. And, and you wonder, and still they trust a foreign coach. So that part, whether it's a lack of education, whether it's lack of trust, whether we tend to listen more mm. uh, from a European <laughs> coach than a local coach, I just feel that we, by this time around, there are certain countries that they should naturally have local coaches coaching the national team. Now, if you look at the record, if you look at, uh, okay, the last, look at Senegal, Senegal the holders. Yeah. Uh, you look at Algeria, 2021. Uh, 2019, sorry. 2019. Uh, it just tilts in the way of local coaches that have won mm. the Nations Cup. But there are also foreign coaches that have come and done so well, especially in the early 90s, late 80s, where really we were trying to find our footing. Mm. But I feel that with the modern technology, the education that is going around, we are being exposed as coaches as much as the European coaches are exposed to the same principles of coaching. So I'm firmly in favor of, of the continent looking more on their own homegrown coaches than the foreigners, but there are some that have done well as well. Yeah, I have Renard being one of them, not only with Zambia, but he did it with uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah. Um, so, we, you know, we can we can doff our hats at him. Let's listen in. Good evening, Rob, and good evening to the MSW shareholders and uh, the panel that you have in the studio, a very knowledgeable panel. But man, for me, I'm, I'm more excited for the African Cup of Nations because I want to see what our boys uh, will do. I just want to see how Bafana Bafana will perform because... I think coming to this, uh, yes, they've had um, some good um, performances and some have not been so good. But uh, I, I believe in the coach. I believe that he's going to take us far because, yeah, like from how we started to where we are now, yes, it's just that there's been some inconsistencies here and there, but 
in the overall greater scheme of things, I believe we are going to do well. So I, I truly, truly believe that we are going to do well. I just need to, Bafana, the players, for them to also believe in that. And then just play, man, and play and enjoy their football and enjoy their trade. Because I think if only they enjoy, they're going to give us good results. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Thank you so much indeed. Let them enjoy the football and let them give us the good results. Uh, gentlemen, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for all of these uh, uh, messages that are coming through. Let me touch on uh, very quickly. We're running out of time. Um, I know that Cameroon are going to be up against the holders, Senegal. I mean, we always look for these mouth-watering games in the tournament. And I think for me, you know, outside of the Ghana <laughs> versus Egypt game, that is also another potential one. Uh, Eddie, uh, Tim? Uh, Cameroon, once you mentioned Cameroon, you're looking at uh, Rigo Batsong, uh, Senegal, El Sisi, you yes. know, legends of the game. You're looking at the Federation president, uh, Samuel Eto. So it's quite an interesting game. But for me, there's something that uniquely that is happening in these two countries. Uh, yeah. Senegal has gone to get all the legends and the likes of Fadiga, Diof, they are all playing a role internationally. And, and, and streamlining how football should be run and managed in the country. If you look at Cameroon, they have gone the same route. Yes. Uh, Samuel Eto, Rico Batsong, and so are the players. You know, you're getting the likes of Matip even trying to come back you know, to, uh, to the national team. You're getting Onana to come, you know, to renegade on his wife that he's quitting yes. the national team. Now he's feeling that he's wanted, he feels to come, uh, to come back to the national team. So that's the feeling that they have got. So these traditional have been the football powerhouses of African continent, but it's what they are doing well yeah. to structure and streamline uh, football administration in the country that gives them an edge. So it's a water model. It's a very big game, this one. Oh, I'm not going to make you repeat that because Morocco, for me, you were favoring North Africa. We saw how well Morocco did in Qatar. Yes. For the very first time, they were making history. We never get to semifinals as a continent. Mm -hmm. And Morocco was doing that. But the, the, the crazy thing is that they haven't won this tournament since 1976. How can they do well? Will they do well? Will they lift this trophy? Uh, I think, yeah, because of what they did uh, at yeah. the World Cup. And I think they want to take that into the Africa Cup of Nations. So I think for, for them, it's, it's, a, um, it's a big and huge task for them because of what they did. So you look at all the players that they have, you know, it's, it's, on paper, they should be winning even the World Cup. So coming to, to Africa Cup of Nations, now that's where the hard work starts. They now should be they, even winning the paper, they, as you're saying. Exactly. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, I, can, I can put my head on the block. This is Africa. It's the African it, it, Cup of Nations. But you, we, we, have you never, we have never <laughs> seen Morocco with those players playing in the Let's African continue Cup of this conversation in the brand new year. Eddie Dinia, thank you so much. She last took up a couple wins, so thank you very much indeed. Timothy Pantabair, thank you very much, gentlemen. Have a great festive season. We've noted the teams that you said will win. Yes. Please win over the festive season. <laughs> Look after yourself. See you in the new year. We'll continue this debate, guys. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Thank you. Fascinating stuff indeed. We'll be back again for round last tomorrow. Hashtag MSW live now on 947 Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live at the same time. Hashtag MSW.